What's up, Simonix? Welcome back to a new vlog episode. Today is once again time for our famous Ionic news flash. To celebrate this, I of course got my Ionic socks on and I also got a new great chair so we can dive into a lot of updates. We got new uh, tools, we got new versions, we got a lot of new courses and tutorials and we also got exciting news about Capacitor. So really, everything in this news flash. Let's dive into it. Alright, so there are quite a few things I want to show you today. A lot has happened during the last month, so let's go through this. First of all, new courses inside the Ionic Academy. There's a new Firebase Basics course because, well, all the other courses are so fast, uh, out of date. This is now using Angular Fire 6, so hopefully this will be at least valuable for like a few months. Um, on top of that, we also got a new course on Ionic best practices. Um, I really wanted to do this for a long time and I actually created a PDF file that kind of looks like my book. It's about 30, 35 pages long with a lot of different best practices about the architecture, coding guidelines, performance um, and other things. So I really enjoyed creating this and I hope the members of the Ionic Academy really like it. If you're not yet a member, make sure to check it out, ionicacademy.com. In terms of new content, of course, a lot has happened since the last time we had the news flash. Um, I created a few things on uh, different directives or components. So uh, this one was a bottom drawer component that I saw somewhere on Twitter. Um, this component actually might be something in the future we will see in the core of Ionic. Um, but with this directive, it's quite easy uh, to create it with Ionic gestures. Um, then I got another bigger template, which is an Ionic Firebase chat. Uh, I really wanted to create more of these um, template-like uh, tutorials. So if you got any ideas for like bigger templates, please always let me know. I'm really happy and I think you also enjoyed these kind of tutorials. Then another directive for the parallax header, uh, you know, the effect where you scroll a page down and the image is just going a bit slower than the background. Uh, I really also enjoyed creating this one since it's also based on the standard Ionic components and APIs. Then you also requested a bit more on social login. So we got one uh, tutorial on capacitor Google sign in. And the latest one, I think this here is Ionic Facebook sign in. Um, both are not too challenging. Well, uh, for Facebook, you need to do a bit of <laughs> extra stuff, but in general, it's uh, really, um, well, possible for anyone using Capacitor to implement your social sign in. Um, this one actually also in our range of new topics, uh, Capacitor video capturing. I found this quite interesting because um, this is basically done with standard components in JavaScript. So uh, no fancy capacitor plugin as far as I know. Uh, okay, we install a video player, but that's just for playing the video. Capturing the video works with standard web technologies. And I found this really interesting as well. And then finally, a bit on SQLite, you're requesting this over and over, especially using a PHP backend with SQL. I'm really not into PHP, but I tried my best to show you uh, how you could use your existing SQL data inside a my Ionic app with SQLite functionality. Um, and then we also, uh, I create a lot of tutorials, uh, something on downloading and opening files because um, there's still a bit of confusion about downloading and uploading files and actually it's what is this? Okay, this is the file opener. Um, but for the downloading progress, usually you can use the standard Angular HTTP client. Um, you just need to take care of a few things. Everything is explained in this tutorial and it's not too hard once you get it one time. Then a tutorial I really enjoyed by Matt on the official Ionic blog, uh, tips to improve Ionic Angular app performance. I really enjoyed uh, everything he presents in this article. I used a bit of the information or I went deeper into this uh, for the best practices guide that I created for the Ionic Academy. But in general, I would really recommend you check this out. Uh, a lot of good stuff in this post. Now, uh, let's move this to the end and talk about something else. Let's talk about Kickoff Ionic for a second. I finally released a big update for Kickoff Ionic and that is using your existing API instead of Firebase. Now, uh, you might have checked out this in the past. Uh, you put in your Firebase configuration entities and everything will be created. Now, if you define an existing API, 
um, then you can basically do the same stuff like before, but the generated code looks a bit different. Uh, let's zoom into this a bit because what's generated now is an Ionic application uh, with still the same entities, like you got an author, but now the author service is not connected to Firebase, but using the standard HTTP client and uses or already implements the basic CRUD functionalities to create an author, to update an author, to get authors, uh, delete AOC. And on top of that, I also implemented um, what you can select as authentication and I tried to implement the most basic version of this uh, or how I would implement it with a JSON web token flow. Of course your API URLs might be different but in general there's also a JSON web token interceptor immediately added. So this is really the code generated by Kickoff Ionic. If you haven't tried it yet, um, yeah the interceptor is included. <laughs> I was a bit scared for a second. And of course, inside the environment, it's your base URL, whatever you insert. You can try this out as well for free. Um, there are more functionalities that you can get with a pro version, uh, like more snippets from our code snippets library that you can immediately include in the app. Uh, and a lot of other functionalities. But so far, I would love to uh, get your opinion about this and using APIs within Kickoff. And there's also a roadmap where you can always submit your own ideas. On top of that, there's another tool that Max shared and created called init, or uh, well, the URL is init.page. It's basically like the Ionic creator was in the past. So you can uh, create pages and uh, work on those pages directly with a little interface builder here. Uh, you can create this theme. I might want to copy a bit of this perhaps because I really enjoyed this feature. And you can also preview it and usually uh, you can share it with your URL. So that's really a cool functionality. Uh, Max is still looking for feedback for this tool and I also need to find out how init and kickoff ionic can coexist or what's the real unique value of kickoff that init doesn't have like generating um, all your entities but in general I don't want to compete with the ionic company um, and I really enjoyed this tool I might actually use it myself um, so I'm not going to build this interface builder kind of thing because it's already here and I'm sure Ionic will build out this tool more in the future. Um, so I really have to see what's unique for kickoff then. But otherwise, give it a try, check it out in it page. Then let's talk about versions. Uh, Angular 11 is released. Um, if you create a new Ionic application, it is still on Angular 10 usually. But the update process is actually pretty easy. You can always check out how to update from your current version to the latest version. And right now it's only ng update Angular Core Angular CLI. So that's really like the easiest thing you can do. And there's a cool new functionality that was a bit harder to implement in the past and is now a lot easier. And that's called hot module replacement. You can enable this functionality. Um, how can I? Uh... Um, ah, okay, yeah, never mind. Um, you can simply enable this by running Ionic Surf dash 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 hot module replacement. Um, so then it gets passed to the Angular CLI, which will basically call ng surf dash dash hot module replacement. What this does is quite interesting and also kind of fascinating. You see my page in the background. Let's change something new title and let's watch the, uh, the page here. Uh, well, did I mess up something? Yeah, I think so. Um, let's also change the color to primary. And you see the build is a lot faster and instantly reloading our page. Um, just add something, watch the page and it's there. Um, the time is like, I would say like three or five times faster than the regular serve. Uh, and it also simply uh, directly reloads your module. So everything still works, you're still on the same page. Um, this is really an amazing new feature that you should definitely use while uh, building your application. When you upgrade to Angular 11, you can also read about the, the other uh, updates. Um, they have a lot better, um, well, uh, a lot better locks in here. It looks more structured. They updated uh, a few other things that you can check out. TypeScript 4 is now used. 
but once again uh, I really made this uh, work just by running the update command and then I got Angular 11 in here works fine so far with Ionic and actually 5 why is the starter not using the latest version well Never mind. So Angular F11 works, hot module replacement is epic. As I said, uh, not sure why 5.0 is used since 5.5.1 is the current Angular uh, Ionic version, um, but overall the last releases were more targeted to, um, uh, well, fix a few things and add a lot of new things for the view implementation. So there's nothing really critical added so far. Uh, just wanna let you know we're at 5.5.1. Now let's dive into what Max says last month. We could actually make a whole show on that uh, where I just save all the important nuggets he posts on Twitter. So um, uh, Adam Bradley is sending me some mind blowing demos uh, he's working on for Capacita. Uh, it's going to completely change how people look at this kind of apps. They are currently working really a lot on Capacitor and Capacitor 3.0 is, uh, well, I don't know how soon we're gonna see it, but definitely soon. Uh, ben also commented, can confirm, just got a preview, will be a game changer. <laughs> uh, really gets me excited about what they are preparing. I really don't know it at this time. Um, they got a lot of new hires, in particular Capacitor team is on fire. Um, well, uh, well, this was also blah, 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 uh, exciting stuff we're working on with Capacitor.js. So he's mentioned it like three or five times now. Um, and if you take a look at the Capacitor repository, you will see the 3.0 milestone. Uh, currently, it's about 90% complete. Um, we might see a beta soon. Uh, and I'm really, I know about a few things like outsourcing the core plugins into their own NPM packages. So not everything is completely bundled with Capacitor, but uh, I haven't looked into all the other implementations and um, uh, commits they made so far. I also wanna get a bit excited when they release it and re uh, read about all the cool stuff. So uh, really excited what they're going to do. Also a nice tweet I recently saw from the community uh, from Aparachita. Uh, he made a repository about a native decorator to more easily build uh, Capacitor plugins. I found this really interesting. Um, it's about adding a native decorator here to your functions. So these functions, although this is the web implementation, will use the native code. Um, could be a really useful tool in the future. We'll see if this gets somehow added to Capacitor. I don't know. Um, but definitely a very cool addition. Now, finally, in terms of uh, personal or in general things I will work on over the next time. The first thing is I want to create a new section inside the Ionic Academy that will contain app templates. Not the kind of app templates you're going to buy. Those will be a bit more specific on a, a use case. Uh, we had the discussion inside the Ionic Academy if we want to have like challenges so you can build up your portfolio or app templates that you can immediately use with like one template per month and it looks like at the moment, more people would like to see app templates. That doesn't mean we're not gonna have the portfolio or course or challenges in the future, might be something for the next year. But so far, starting uh, in December, maybe January, I'm not sure, we will have at least one big cool template like a shop template or an app for food delivery, an app for chat, for Firebase, for authentication, something to really kickstart or help you start your next Ionic project faster. So a wide variety of uh, templates, hopefully in a few months. And on top of that, I'm also working on a little new project, which might be kind of big. Perhaps I'm working on Practical Ionic 2 already because I just got a good idea and I wanna, well, I just wanna create it. So this is a very, very early stage. I just created a few backends so far. I'm still waiting for Capacitor 3 since I really wanna use that. Uh, I just wanna announce that maybe you're gonna see Practical Ionic 2 next year. All right, that's it once again for the Ionic News Flash. I hope you enjoyed all the updates uh, about the different tutorials. Check them out on the Ionic Academy or on the DevTactic blog or on the official Ionic blog. And of course, uh, give Ionic 11, no, Angular 11 a try. It's really cool to see the hot module replacement in action. It really speeds up your development flow. 
On top of that, I'm super excited for the Capacita 3. I really don't know when it will be released, but I really hope it's not too far in the future since I also want to work on this little book project that I mentioned. If you got any questions about the news, the tutorials or any requests for upcoming episodes, as usually, let them leave them below and also hit the like and subscribe button so you get notified about all the upcoming episodes and tutorials on this channel so eventually one day we will make it to 100k I forget about it. whatever you do this week i hope you have a great week with a uh, good code updated ionic versions and angular versions and i will catch you next week like always so have a great week and happy coding simon